This is a question that I used to get all of the time, and it kind of went away for a while, only to rear its ugly head recently. I figured this would be a pertinent subject to tackle going into 2018, so let's say you were just birthed into this world as a young adult. Which console should you go with? An Xbox One? A PS4? A Switch? What about a trusty old PC? A little backstory on me first. Yeah, we make a lot of Switch videos here, but I'm not that biased. My console allegiance has run the entire gamut of console companies over the years. My first console was an NES, then a Sega Genesis, then an N64, then a GameCube, then a PS2. Then I spent an awfully long time as a PC gamer. The PC was always there and I was always playing games on it, but this was the time period that I gravitated towards it the most. After that, an Xbox 360 took most of my attention, then a PS4, and now a Switch. Of course, there were other consoles that I owned and played a lot, but these were the ones from each generation that I spent most of my time on. That being said, there were a series of decisions that led me to each console. I think it's important to address the PC master race in the room. Look guys, I like controllers. I like having a dedicated gaming console. You like tinkering around and getting the most out of your games. I respect that, I've been there. But not everybody's like that. It's the same reason people buy iPhones instead of Android phones. If you already have a PC and you're not into the idea of consoles, then it doesn't even make sense for you to be watching this video. Scram. Unless you're hate watching, in which case, don't you have anything else better to do? Linus Tech Tips uploads like every day. Go circle jerk over there. As my last little disclaimer for this video, I will not be talking in depth about the Xbox One X or the PS4 Pro. I do not recommend those iterative consoles unless you love consoles and have the money to blow. Most people who care about 4K resolutions and high frame rates are going to have a PC already, okay? Okay. In the midst of the big console war of 2013, I was just coming off the high of the Xbox 360. I wanted so badly for Microsoft to come out on top. I wanted to keep my gamer score and my Xbox Live subscription, but above all else, I wanted to be able to play with my friends. Unfortunately, Microsoft bombed that conference. Remember that? They almost had DRM on their games. So stick with 360, that's your message if you don't, well, you don't like it? If, if you have zero access yeah. to the internet, that is an offline <laughs> device. This is how you share your games on PS4. Thanks. Try as I might, I could not support them anymore. The final nail in the coffin was including the Kinect to inflate the price $100 over the competition. Basically, this is a long-winded way of saying that I was a PS4 boy. But all these criticisms that I and many other people had then are void now. The Xbox One is cheap, sometimes cheaper than the PS4. They listened and never went ahead with that DRM. They stopped including the Kinect with consoles and stopped trying to jam it down our throats. The Xbox One S is nice and small with no power brick, a significant improvement over the original Xbox One. Not to mention, it's much, much sexier. Another weird improvement is that the original Xbox One controller doesn't have a headphone jack in it. You would need to attach an adapter. I think this is super important. The Xbox One S added that feature. Comparatively, the system has about the same footprint as the PS4, but the PS4 Slim is almost half as tall. Listen, I don't have all these consoles. I'm not going out and spending hundreds of dollars just to make a video. I'm not, you know, I'm not rolling the YouTube money yet, hopefully. This video is brought to you by sponsoring us on YouTube Gaming and Twitch. The UI has gotten better over the years. It lost its dependency on the Kinect. It's still not exactly the most intuitive. He said he had me added. How do I even f find out? You just where, where are my friend requests? Where are they? Where the, f where, what? Wait, oh, wait, I just see. saw it. I just saw it. View profile. Oh. How come I have to go through all of these? Di Look, I got I got four different windows up. Submit Please. the first. Uh... Less is more, guys. In terms of graphics, if you really want to get into the nitty gritty, the baseline PS4 is ever so slightly more powerful than the baseline Xbox One. However, the Xbox One X is light years more powerful than the PS4 Pro. 
But in all honesty, almost all games run identically on the PS4 and the Xbox One. So I don't think graphical fidelity is a system seller, unless you go with the pro versions. Microsoft is doing a very strange thing with exclusives. First of all, there's not that many that I'm into. Second, pretty much everything that has come out after Halo 5 has also come out on Windows 10. So the exclusives aren't really that exclusive. But if you're like me, then this doesn't matter because you like having a dedicated gaming machine anyway. The PS4 Slim is shorter than the original PS4, but the original already didn't have a big bulky power brick. So honestly, I think whichever one you get is just fine. Some will say that you need the Slim or even more so the Pro version if you want to play PlayStation VR. That is simply not true. I use the original with PSVR and it works just fine. I don't think the PSVR is a system seller, but it's certainly a nice touch. If you have nothing and you want to get something that's VR capable, a PS4 with a PSVR is the cheapest and easiest solution to get set up. No, you cannot build a VR capable gaming machine with an Oculus for less than a PS4 and a PlayStation VR. Every one of you who keeps commenting that are insane. I really like the PS4 UI because it's super simple. Once you get too many games or apps, it becomes a pain to scroll to the end, but at least it's not as confusing as the Xbox UI, although it could use some cleaning up. I like the PS4 exclusives better than the Xbox One exclusives. Uncharted, Horizon Zero Dawn, and eventually The Last of Us, and that sweet sex that's gonna be Death Stranding. Put the oh yeah clip in there. Nah, yeah. Racing fans like Gran Turismo far more than Forza, although I think Forza is just fine. I also think that the Sony exclusives just look a little bit better because they don't have to compensate for the inferior original Xbox One hardware. I bet Microsoft can't wait to phase that thing out. I just hope that they wait for a new console generation. Weirdly, a lot of PS4 exclusives are also on PC, but not all of them, and not nearly as many as Xboxes. The Switch is the most unique piece of gaming hardware out there right now. It's not a graphical powerhouse. If you wanna play Doom on your TV at the best possible resolution and frame rate, don't get a Switch. But sometimes graphical power isn't the only thing that matters. When flexibility and portability get added into the equation, suddenly you're willing to compromise. In the past, Nintendo was able to hold their own simply because their exclusive games were so good. Today, I think it's safe to say that they have the best exclusives, but now their hardware fills a need that no other console company can fill. Two of Nintendo's exclusives were up for Game of the Year in 2017. If you include Persona 5, then two of Sony's exclusives were also up for Game of the Year, but they didn't win. The Switch's UI is a major improvement over other Nintendo consoles, which were notoriously terrible. People were upset that the Switch's home screen is lacking music because the Wii music was so iconic. Imagine if your iPad played a song every time you went to the home screen. The Switch's home screen suffers the same issue that the PS4's does, in that all of your apps are in one line. But there's a lot less going on here in general. It's still not amazing, but in my opinion, it's the best UI out of all of the consoles. Part of why it's so nice and simple is because the Switch has no online services right now. The Switch just has way less features than all of the other consoles in that regard. It's still a major pain in the ass to do anything regarding your Nintendo account. And good luck if you wanna play online with somebody. And God help you if you wanna to try to talk to them. You'll need the app on your phone and a whole contraption to get the game audio and the chat audio in your headset at the same time. It's a whole mess. The Joy-Con are, again, very versatile and unique, but far from ideal. Sure, the HD rumble is cool and the motion controls work really well, but they're just way too damn small, and even in the Joy-Con grip, the angle just doesn't feel right. It's fine, it's just not great. It's necessary for them to be this way because they have to work in portable mode, and they work fantastically in portable mode. 
but I think you pretty much need a Pro Controller, and that will run you an additional 70 bucks. The DualShock 4 is a great controller, a nice step up from the DualShock 3, but it's still nothing revolutionary. I think the Xbox One S controller design is the best in class. Everything about it just feels right. You've got the giant buttons, the really short travel distance, the back is curved in just the right way for your hands. It's amazing. Even the D-pad is solid, and that's sad considering Nintendo is supposed to have that D-pad design on lock. Okay, this is where I'm going to get into some trouble. For first person shooters, the mouse is a near perfect input device. The keyboard is not. It's not made for gaming, it's made for typing. You only use a few of the buttons on one side and they're not ergonomically laid out. PCs have by far the best graphics out of any of the consoles because they're always ahead of the curve. Sometimes multi-platform games don't run so good and they have some weird ass glitches, but the games that do run good run really, really good. The UI on the PC is, um... Maintenance and continuous upgrading of your PC isn't for everybody, but if clarity and wow factor matter to you, then the PC is the way to go. You can always plug in the best controller, an Xbox One S controller, and use that. However, if money is a factor for you, and you don't already have a PC that can be easily upgradable, then you might have to consider your console options. PCs can be expensive, even a low-end gaming rig could be more than an Xbox One S and a Nintendo Switch combined. And here come all of the insane people telling me that you can build a good gaming rig for less than an Xbox. Out of all of these consoles, I like the Nintendo Switch the most. But remember, this video is for somebody who is just birthed into existence with nothing. I don't think the Nintendo Switch is a great console for people who have no other means of playing games. I think it's a great ancillary console to something else. I would say, and this might surprise you, that if you have a pretty beefy gaming PC already, then buy a Switch to go along with it. You can play most of the AAA stuff on the PC, and then whatever else you can on the go. Plus, your PC can do way more than any console can. But if you don't have a PC that can run games, and you don't have a use for a PC in any other regard like creative work or I don't know, spreadsheets, then you might want to consider a PS4 or an Xbox One S. In terms of exclusives, I think Sony wins, but it's really up to you. Take a look at everything that I laid out in this video and figure out what works best for you. If you had to just pick one out of all of these and it's strictly for gaming, <sighs> Sony? So what do you guys think about Switch? Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC all versus each other. Leave in the comments below, add me on Twitter, all this other social media garbage. Remember, there's a lot of different scenarios. Some people have a good PC already. Some people don't want a computer at all. I know a lot of people who just use their phones, they don't own a computer. Like, what year is it? A lot of people look at only exclusives, but with so many multi-platform games, I don't think that matters as much anymore. Unless you look at Nintendo, because that's pretty much the only reason you get a Nintendo console. That and, I mean, the portability, let's hope for more third-party support. Anyway, we got new videos and live streams a lot of the time here on youtube.com slash wolfden. We got some live streams on twitch.tv slash wolfden also where you can see these videos go up early. I was on the You Gotta Watch podcast talking about my favorite movie of all time, Return of the Jedi. If you want to watch that, listen to that. And of course, the most important things you can do is subscribe and share this video with a friend, a friend who wants to get into gaming and needs one of these or wants one to go along with their Switch. Thank you guys very much. Have yourselves a very good week.